let us discuss SMT2 format. SMT2 format was developed for one particular reason. Uh, around the early 2000s or just before that, a uh, lot of tools about automated uh, reasoning coming up online and they're being used in a practical setting. So they said, well, let's have a common input format. Uh, the solver specific APIs are not sufficient to really build a verification tools such that they can operate independent of the solvers. So they came up with a, a common input format such that we have interoperability. If you build a verification tool, it depends on one solver. You can use another solver. And, uh, uh, and then you can build a database of problems. If you have a database of problems, you can compare the tools and uh, post results and then you understand what algorithms works better, what technology works better, etc. Et so they came up with the standard and then you can find the standard. This. So first the standard came SMT standard and then came SMT2 standard. So currently we have a SMT2 standard. Uh, formulas are written in prefix notation. That means that the, the operator comes first and the parameters comes later. It's a bit unusual format. Human readability is reduced. However, this format is very easy to implement and very easy to parse. So uh, any uh, novice uh, PhD student can implement tools on top of such, such files. So that's why such a notation was selected. Uh, solvers interact like stack. You can push a formula into it and then pop a formula out of it. And you can solve all the pushed formulas. Let's see how that works. If you write an SMT2 file, it has four distinct parts. First, you write a preamble, some sort of a declaration. It defines what kind of logic you're using, etc., etc., and there's some parameters of the solving process. Then you write a uh, sort declarations, and then you have a variable declarations, and then you have a formulas, right? And at the end, you have a solving command. So let's look at the preamble part. The preamble sets the configuration of the solvers. For example, here you are saying uh, that input formula is a quantifier free uninterpreted function in linear integer arithmetic. And also you can set some parameters. For example, saying is that if you find unsatisfiability, produce proof of unsatisfiability and that your parameter setting it to be true. Some of them are well defined, pre-declared, but somehow some of these parameters can be very solver specific. Now next comes the sort declaration. In a sort declaration, you declare a new sort with some, some new name. Uh, how many other uh, sorts it takes as parameters? Slightly unusual concept. Let's look at an example. Uh, you have uh, this para this new sort being declared U, and it takes no parameter. Uh, let's consider this sort where you have a sort array, which takes two parameters to declare. That means this is sub any variable you declared of type array has to have two sorts. Okay, so you will write array, and let's say int type and int type. That means it's a declaring an array which takes an int and returns an another int. Now, once you have a sort, you can declare new variables and symbols or functions. For example, you can declare a single variable x which takes no parameter as input and its, of its type is integer. f is a function which takes one parameter as input and returns another parameter. Consider this variable h which uh, takes uh, array uh, which takes two parameters an array and an integer. An array is of type which takes uh, uh, a u sort uh, input and returns an integer and these two inputs returns another integer. It's slightly confusing, but when you get used to it, this is very intuitive notation.
now you can write formulas once you have declared the variables you have, you have declared the functions now you can write formulas for example you can write with the formula with assert key so keyword and you can write formula that this, uh, this term is greater than or equal to this term similarly you can use uninterpreted functions declared in the in your declaration section and you can you can say that f of x and then you say g of x of x and you can compare them now the last part what we're supposed to do with these uh, formulas and sorts and variables that were declared earlier so you can ask it to check set all the asserted formulas or you can also ask uh, get model give them give me the model of the satisfying assignment of this this formula formula that were asserted so far there's a, another layer to it which is the stack interaction all the asserted formulas are pushed in the stack of the solver okay this is this is important notation to understand as soon as you assert a formula it's on a stack what you can do you can give additional command called push this command doesn't push anything it puts a marker on this stack and if you call pop operation, what pop is actually the actor and what it removes the asserted formulas that are up to the last push command. For example, let's suppose I, I put a push here and this is a push a marker on a stack. And if I assert a formula and call set, something happened, happened and I get yes or no. And then I, what I can do, I can pop. So what pop does, it removes this formula. And it goes back to the state where it was this. Okay. You can assert another formula and solve the constraint again. As if this piece of the code never happened. So let me put all this together. So you have a uh, basically a declaration of what kind of logic is here. And then you're saying, oh, I want to produce proofs if you have unsatisfiability. Then you declare variables, you can declare functions and then you can write formulas you can tell solver to check satisfiability you try to get model if it's satisfiable and you can place a marker after placing a marker you can assert more formulas in then you can check set again and depending whatever the situation you can do other things but you can do one more thing in pop so pop will does it just under undo this part of the code and you can do more things but in this case at the end i'm saying exiting job done exit solve what you can do is take this piece of code and push it in z3 you can execute z3 online here is a here is a url go to this url and uh, put this code in the z3 and see the output 